it's true when you're on an island. Yeah. With the exception of Manhattan, where you forget all the time by the sheer size of it. But when you're on any island, say Governor's yeah. Island or yeah. Martha's Vineyard, you know you're on an island. Right. And your consciousness is altered. Even when you don't see any water, you're also aware that you're on an island. Right. And I think there's the bridge provides a kind of um, island for us. You're not pushed to the margin, you're not on the side of traffic. You are at the center of this man walking. Yes. Something that we've done eternally, cars may come and go, is the thing that makes this bridge sort of, it's for people. It's for people. Oh, it's, a, it's a hugely democratic yep. ideal before we're really willing to actually understand what a democracy might mean. And um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I mean, look at that. It's just incredible. Yeah. This is one of my favorite spots on earth. Yeah. I, I remember David McCullough said in our film that it was like standing on the rim of the Grand Canyon. And I think there are people who go, huh, what, Brooklyn Bridge? And yet, when you think that that, those two towers were the tallest man-made objects in all of North America, that what it must have been like to live in a Manhattan and a Brooklyn of nothing more than four or five stories, to suddenly having this thing uh, soaring above you. Without the Civil War, this doesn't get made because the Civil War helps promote the manufacture and the movement from iron to steel. Right. Steel permits this long span to happen. So you have this beautiful Gothic towers, which represents sort of the old world and antiquity almost in a way, with the stone in compression and then the steel intention, which is the future. I have the privilege when I'm in New York to usually walk over the bridge twice a day. And, and you begin to recognize and nod at people the way you do your neighbors in the small town in New England that I live in. This is all approach yeah. in a certain sense. No, no, you know, no, it's we're just... In, you're essentially moving towards this thing, which is the first tower. So there is this sense of sequence. And this is all sort of preamble. Yes. No, no, this is this is the orchestra yeah. tuning up, yeah, right? right? And then yeah. when you hit the wooden walkway, that's it. it's it's when the overture begins, right. right? The guy who designs it, John Roebling, who's the best engineer of bridges, knows it's also going to be a work of art. If this was Gershon Rhapsody in Blue, we'd be hearing... And reaching the first da, climax. Da, da, da. Yeah, I mean, Roebling represents so much about America of that moment as well, right? The, the immigrant, the sort of the dreamer, um, the inventor. He had sort of spiritual beliefs that brought him here. So there was something about him that was like the bridge, a kind of emblem of America at that time. This is the moment when the first radiating stays come out. This is the, what gives the stability, but it's what also creates the music of, of yeah. this thing. He wanted to make sure that the bridge would be secure enough that it wouldn't move. And so there is something that you, I think, feel, even if you don't know it. That form was determined by factors that weren't just sort of pie in the sky. They were there because Roebling was trying to do something new. I have tried in all of my walks, yeah. I think mostly successfully, to be present to myself at this moment, right. now, as we see this amazing thing unfold before us. To be in this moment. To be yeah. in this moment. Ken, you were 24 years old <laughs> when you started to make this film about the Brooklyn Bridge. The bridge was celebrating its centenary uh, back then, and uh, we're at 140 now. And I, you know, I'm a born and raised New Yorker, so I remember that period and how different New York was then, um, and in the years coming up to that. Um, what, what did you think the bridge meant?
the city seemed fragile. And this had a kind of optimistic thing. It was almost as if it was a lens through which you could go backwards in times, of course, because of all the things that it represents architecturally and artistically and civically and in terms of engineering. But it also represented a kind of constant that was a positive that you didn't have anywhere. You arrive at this moment, it feels like you've reached sort of the door, the portal, right. the doorway of a Gothic cathedral. That's what right. do you see? You see this nave. And then you have this slight dip down. This is the, this is the public square. There is still this way in which you go down, you slow down a little bit. And you and the things open up, and you want to take a little time here. Yes. And that's sort of the middle movement. That's right. Exactly right. I find that such a beautiful thing that you're constantly it's... moving towards the next thing on the bridge. There's never a moment that captures the whole thing. You know, I'm a filmmaker, and I determine how long a shot lasts, right? Right. Um, in a gallery, you can stand in front of a painting all day if you right. wanted to, and so you're the director in, in essence. Here, you are submitting to someone else who also understands what your experience is through time, but is offering you, in a way, an extended motion picture. It's, it's the greatest argument for the analog world. This bridge, I think, also represented New York in another way, which was that we can be more than we are. We need to aspire to something greater. And, and that's, I, I wanted to get back for a moment to this time when you did it, because the bridge, as I said, has been cleaned recently. The waterfronts are so different, and the nature of the city is really changed and in some ways it's been cleaned up it's less dangerous but the city has much less of a sense i think of optimism there yeah. was a kind of paradox to that i agree time in the 70s and 80s it was a low moment and yet people i think could still look up and now things seem in some ways much better and yet people are much more pessimistic it would be almost impossible to imagine something like this bridge being built oh I, I it couldn't be built at all for a variety of reasons but i think you're right this is still our lords though you know i mean because maybe you come to be recharged you know what is it that happens when you walk over the brooklyn bridge uh, it's 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 powerful and, and, and mysterious to me you know, I, I have a funny story that really ended in a, in a perfect way, which is I'd been hounding Arthur Miller to give us an interview, and he was postponing and postponing. And so he finally agreed to be interviewed at his Connecticut farm, and he just basically says... I mean, they could have built another Manhattan Bridge, couldn't they? And he didn't. He really aspired to do something gorgeous. So it uh, makes you feel that maybe you too could add something that would last and be beautiful. And that's the key to it. So at a time when we are acquisitive and our transactional selves have sort of smothered the weeds of, of inappropriate and inattentive architecture, have blotted out the beautiful, gorgeous flowers of our garden, at a time when we don't feel a kind of confidence, there is a place mm -hmm. in the world in New York City, in the United States of America, where you can go and maybe be opened to the possibility that you could do something that would last and be beautiful. And I've tried my damnedest coming out of this bridge and what it does to do what Arthur said. This is our possibility yeah. here. And I love that the bridge did for you what Miller was talking about. Uh, as it does for so many people who may or may not know the history, who don't, and, but just, just feel it somehow. You feel it. You feel it.